All right, people, Mr. Wright here with lesson 21 for the trombone. In today's lesson, which is entitled The Clarinet Mariana Trench, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna help our clarinet buddies. I want you to understand a few things about the clarinet and how to encourage your clarinet players if, they're working to, if you're working together with uh, other clarinets, say in a band situation. Or you might be starting your own little band as a 14 year old and you're kind of isolated someplace and you've got some friends, you can use this band method to start your own little band. But uh, the clarinets, I've written up some notes here. Of course they read treble clef and uh, this is, it used to be called the G clef because this cursive G, it used to look like a cursive G. And of course our clef, the bass clef, used to look like uh, an F, a cursive F. But the, you're probably also wondering, why all these high notes? Have I just kind of just nailed you with all these high notes all of a sudden? It's because I want you to help our clarinets with these same range of notes. This is what they're having to work on uh, because, and it starts just with their thumb F right here and working their way down. They're sealing off each one of these little tone holes with their fingers. Saxophones have, when they press down a key, a pad covers up the hole. But for clarinets, they have to, their fingers are the pads. So they've got to seal off perfectly each one of these tone holes or the note that's not sealed off will not sound. So, so starting, it'll sound just like this, just with that F. That low E right there is the lowest note on the clarinet, this low E. And I just work my way straight down. And that's why, like from the F to this F, it's the easiest scale on the clarinet. Now, you also need to know that there's two flats built into the clarinet already. All of their Bs are B flat. When it, whenever they play a C, it transposes, the whole the instrument transposes down a whole step. So when they're saying, playing a C like this, what the pitch that's actually coming out is a B flat. And whenever they play an F, what the note actually that comes out is actually an E flat. So you might, why are you telling all this stuff about clarinet stuff? Well, because this is why I've been giving you all these higher notes. I wanted you to have, while they're working on, working on sealing all of these uh, holes to play each one of these notes, uh, I wanted you to have an equal challenge as well. So this F right here for them, is your E flat. Now, there's not a flat written in front of that, that F there, but it's, it's built into their, the transposition of their instrument. So that's your E flat. And uh, these are some of the notes that we've been working on. That is your D. That's exact same pitch when they play it. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. Their D is your C above the staff. That, that C there, that low C for them, that's your B flat. Okay, that's one of those flats that's built into their transposition. And of course, it works its way down. That's your A, your G, your F, your E flat right here. And then your D in fourth position is their lowest note that they can play on the clarinet, right? That low note. So, so if I put that, like, of course, I just, I've already played that for you. If I play it on the trombone, You'll see this uh, starting with this E flat working my way down. Uh, okay, now it, same notes right there. So you're working on these high register notes, sort of high, uh, these right through here, so that you can play some of the same exercises right there with them to help them. But, and, and you want to encourage them, just say, you know, you can learn this also. Uh, they've got all these notes that they've got to learn the names for, which is pretty tough for them, but there's an easy way for them to do that. I'm going to get rid of this bottom line right here just to kind of, so you can kind of focus a little bit. You want to help them say, ah, this is like a water drop hanging underneath the staff. That's their D. That's their C. Uh, imagine these little ledger lines. They're extensions of the staff. It's like they, they scoop down that way. But this C, imagine these, these little uh, ledger lines right there are daggers. I call them ledger line daggers that somebody has thrown. And they've thrown this one at Carl. It, Carl, it stabbed Carl right in the middle. So that's Carl right there. That's a C. And this looks like a B. He's got his little wings straight out. A little still picture of him. He's got his wings still out like a bumblebee. And uh, so that's a B. Okay, his wings are out. And then 
This is Albert because Albert, he, he ducked down, uh, and, but they threw two ledger line daggers at Albert. It's terrible. And they threw, and so he ducked, and they, th that one went over his head, but this one, it, it struck its target. It's terrible what happened to Albert, but that's Albert. And this is Gary the fireman. Gary, uh, you know, he had fire training, <clears throat> fire safety training. He learned to stop, drop, and roll, <clears throat> and, his, and his training showed him he ducked and dropped on the ground. So Gary was able to avoid both of the ledger line because of his training. And then this is fish. Uh, see these three ledger lines? They're like the three prongs of Neptune's trident, okay? And, but of course, this fish right there has been stabbed by the third prong of Neptune's trident. So uh, that's the fish right there, the low F for fish. And then this is at the very bottom of the clarinet Mariana Trench, even below the reach of King Neptune, uh, you've got E for, for an eel. So he's an eel. He's snuck right below those, those he's so far down there. He's got, so this is an eel. This is a fish, the F. This is G for Gary, Gary the fireman, who uh, his fire safety training drop, stop, drop, and roll. So he ducked beneath the two fire, the, those ledger line daggers. And then Albert, you know, poor victim. And then this is a bumblebee. He's happy. And then, but poor Carl. Hmm. And the, the D, water drop D. So that's just, you want to help your clarinet friends. You say, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's Gary. <laughs> that's Gary. We go way back, you know. So, and, and all, all fish. Yeah, you got to learn your fish. And so they can learn this. That's just all three, all three fingers, all three fingers, three fingers, and right hand pinky. They're low F, both pinkies down, low E for eel, right? So just encourage your clarinet buddies because if they don't progress and if they don't learn this, they won't be able, once they hit the register key, see all these fingers have to be perfectly sealed or else those notes are not going to come out. And say, they learn to do this. They learn how to go from the F down to the F and then even down to the E. So, then they, all they got to do is rock that thumb up. They can't take their thumb off that back hole right there, but they rock their thumb up and it will pop them up a 12th. So, So that opens up the high register on the clarinet, and they need to do that. And if it, until they can over seal off these fingers and get that embouchure right, you're going to be stuck. So you don't want to be stuck as a trombone player. You want to encourage your clarinet buddies to move on. And you say the, it's the embouchure. It's got. It's going to be one of two things. It's going to be their embouchure that's not right. Sometimes clarinet players they 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 grab onto the very tip, and they'll go. It won't play. Something's wrong with my clarinet. No. It, it, they're, they're clamping off this reed. They need to put enough of it into their mouth to where this reed can vibrate. And they just want to seal it off to the sides. And the, what you want to do is they have your band director say, hey, they need to check their mouthpiece. It might be... And I'm just touching my tongue to the reed right there. So uh, if you're working, helping a clarinet player friend out, you know, you just say, you need to try just the barrel and the mouthpiece only. And they don't need to move their jaw at all, just like on the trombone or any other instrument. So there needs to be enough in the mouthpiece. If there's, if it's, you get this squeaking sound, there's too much in the mouthpiece. And so they want to seal off the corners of the reed right there, those two sides, with this part right here, rolling the bottom up under just a little bit, sealing off the sides and allowing the middle, middle of the, the reed to vibrate. So once they got that going, then they've got to be able to seal off all these finger holes and then what they can do, they just hit the register key and work up. And, and we've got exercises dealing with all of that. But you need to encourage your clinic friends so that you can move on. Now to the next part of our lesson. You've got this same familiar E flat in third position. And I did put all the position uh, numbers below each note, just in case you're a little bit behind or haven't really caught on to it yet. So, um, and notice I put some of these little symbols that we were just talking about, like the fish, we know that's the clarinet's low F, and of course the eel and such. But let's try uh, number one here, starting on that high E flat in third position, walking our way down. And of course, when we get to this D here in the middle of our staff, that is the lowest note on the clarinets. So they're gonna have to seal off each one of those finger holes so that those notes will pop out. So that later on, when they do hit the register key, the notes over the break 
Um, that's whenever they're hitting the register key and going up high, that's called going over the break. Uh, so, so let's try number one right here. Pretty simple one, a simple exercise for us. It's three lines long, so be aware of that. So it's these three different lines right here. So here comes number one. One, two, three. Then, number two, now there's a big gap at the bottom of your page because I didn't, uh, for the clarinet page, there's the thing about, you know, Carl who was stabbed by the ledger line dagger and all that stuff. So I wrote all that out for them. But here, very simple exercise. Let's just try number two, two now. One, two, three. <laughs> This is the second to the lowest note for the clarinets. So for them to just nail this, everything's gotta be right. So if they're struggling with this exercise, that's why. Now we move on to number three. All right, in eighth notes. Uh, one and two and three and four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And one, two, three, four. So here comes number three. One, two, three. <laughs> Number four, eighth notes here, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three and four, one, and I think you can put the rest of it. So here so you go dun 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 rest dun dun. So here comes number four. One, two, three. <laughs> Again, these notes are tough for clarinets because they're playing at the very bottom of the register. Everything has to be sealed perfectly for these notes to sound for them. Then, number five. One and a two and three and four. One and two and three, four. One and a two and three and four. One and two and three, four. And the rest of it's pretty simple. Just da 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 Right, you gotta move that tongue. So here comes number five. One, two, three. <laughs> And you 
can slow these down too, I, especially this last one. Uh, da 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 dum dum. Also, another thing, I consider this uh, crossbar right here kind of like a little rabbit or a squirrel. A squirrel would be better. And uh, the bell is sort of like a, a tree that the squirrel's running around. That squirrel can just jump right around that tree. So be thinking about that landmark of the bell, the end of the bell is this little landmark because uh, your third position is gonna be, you can, uh, it's right before the bell, okay? I can put my finger kind of like that. It's a little bit kind of into it. And then uh, usually the fourth position is when the end of the slide is even with the end of the bell. Uh, this little section on my slide right there is kind of short. I kind of go just a little bit beyond that for fourth position. But your main thing that you're going to use to tune up your positions with is your ear. So that's how you primarily tune. But these are just basic as a landmark, yeah. But you also want to use your ear for the fine tuning of it. So that wraps up. Less than 21 for the trombone.